Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 6 titled as globalization and social change from your textbook social change and development in India. As you know we have already started discussing this chapter. This chapter is divided into four parts. So far we have discussed about the concept of globalization that is what are the main features of globalization, how globalization affects our lives taking examples from Indian society. We have discussed about economic aspects of globalization which includes also global finance, global communication and international division of labor. Today we will discuss about political dimensions of globalization which includes global governance and the emergence of international organizations and institutions. The process of globalization involves two things. The first is an extraordinary increase in international trade and the second is an unprecedented mixing or exchange of cultures at global level. Global interdependence and intensification in cultural, social and political sphere has been a result of emergence of global economic systems only. It would not be wrong to say that the main source of global interdependence is largely due to establishment of global economic systems. What does global economic system mean? We have already discussed that global economic system entails the expansion of capitalism at global level. You know that there has been a rapid increase in the economic activities where design, production, manufacturing, marketing of goods is no longer confined to any single nation state. These processes are carried out in different parts of the globe. Such business enterprises are termed as transnational corporations or multinational corporations that operate at global level. The expansion has been further accelerated by means of information technology where ideas, resources, capital, finance can be exchanged without any delay. By now we have established that globalization has influenced almost every aspect of our life. So how can politics remain unaffected? There is an important debate about political impact of process of globalization. It starts with the collapse of Soviet Union and the fall of Berlin Wall in 1989. This period 1989 marked the start of a new era in world politics. This also accelerated process of globalization. With collapse of Soviet Union, the ideological divide between the East and the West came to an end. The ideological divide that is a division between East following the socialist model and the West following the capitalist model is also sometimes referred to as Iron Curtain. Although it is highly debated, but for many scholars this event that is fall of Berlin Wall and collapse of Soviet Union marked the victory of capitalism. The fall of Berlin Wall heralded new age of globalization, where globalization no longer remained just an economic phenomena. The logic and force of capitalism which already had penetrated most of the world became more deep, rapid and intense with this political change. Political globalization is closely related to economic globalization. In fact, globalization needs some appropriate political support in order to ensure growth and smooth functioning of global capitalism. Global capitalism can successfully thrive only if there are appropriate institutional structures and mechanisms in place that can support and facilitate business and trading at global level. Capitalism places emphasis on market forces to determine shape of economy and therefore regulations of the economy by the state is reduced and subsidies are withdrawn. The entry and the increased role of multinational corporations or companies all over the world leads to a reduction in the capacity of governments to take decisions on their own. They are influenced by the decision making of the international institutions and bodies such as IMF that is International Monetary Fund and WTO that is World Trade Organization. In the place of welfare state it is the market that becomes the prime determinant of economic and social priorities within a nation state. With greater emphasis on the capitalist version of competitiveness, the welfare component of the state and economy is increasingly being reduced or marginalized. All over the world, the old welfare state is now giving way to a more minimalistic state that performs certain core functions only, such as maintenance of law and order and giving security to its citizens. Capitalism and pursuit of profit have become the driving force behind globalization, supported by technological advancement means of transportation and new methods of production. As a result, some scholars say that the gap between the rich and the poor is widening. Both developed and developing countries respond and relate to process and forces of globalization differently. 
This difference in response can be seen in or is reflected in their economic and social policies. The process of globalization in this sense does have a political vision as much as an economic vision. It also gave a specific economic and political approach to the economic policies that underpin globalization all over the world. These changes are often termed as new liberal economic measures. We have already discussed what concrete steps the policy of liberalization took in India. Broadly speaking, in India these policies reflect a political vision of free enterprise which believes that a free rein to market forces will be both efficient and fair. From 1990s, the government adopted policy of liberalization. The decision to open up was supported by powerful global and international organizations. With the policy of liberalization, restrictions or barriers on international trade and foreign investments were lifted to large extents in India. The critics criticize these policy decisions as taken by the government under the pressure of international organizations. Whereas, the advocates of globalization appreciate opening up the economy for foreign players. Some scholars claim that the forces of globalization undermine the importance of states and the national governments. They argue that globalization results in erosion of states' capacity. At the same time, the others believe that globalization does not always reduce states' capacity. The primacy of the state continues to be unchallenged as the basis of political community. State continues to be the supreme authority within the boundary of a nation state. On the contrary, with enhanced technologies available at the disposal of the state to collect information about its citizens, in some respects state capacity has received a boost as a consequence of globalization instead of getting reduced. And the state also continues to discharge its essential functions like law and order, providing national security, and it consciously withdraws from certain domains from which it wishes to do so. Another significant political development accompanying globalization is the growth of international and regional mechanisms for political collaboration. Some examples are the European Union, which is popularly called as EU, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, called as ASEAN, SARC countries, which is South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, and South Asian Federation of Trade Association, which is called as SAFTA. These regional associations are assuming significant role and importance in the field of economy, politics and international relations in the era of globalization. Yet another important political dimension of globalization has been the rise of international governmental organizations that is IGOs and international non-governmental organizations that is INGOs. An intergovernmental organization is a body that is established by participating governments and it is given responsibility for regulating and overseeing a particular domain of activity that is transnational in nature and global in character. In fact, the dynamics of interdependence in the globalization era has created a need to develop a minimum framework of rules and agreements to address a large number of global issues. Various international organizations and institutions ensure that these rules or agreements are followed in the process of global intermingling or exchange. The importance of international organizations has been increasing in the last couple of decades. This framework is also called as global governance. Global governance can be defined as the political interaction of transnational organizations and actors. The aim of the global governance is to look for solutions to the global problems that affect people and societies across the states and these problems are no longer problems of a particular nation or society such as environmental pollution, terrorism, international trafficking. The issues of global governance is response to the increasing interdependence of societies, economies and nations on a global scale. The UN or the United Nations is an example of an international organization. The UN was established in 1945 after the Second World War by 51 countries initially committed to maintain international peace and security and develop friendly relations and promote social progress, better living standards and human rights all over the world. The work of the United Nations reaches every corner of the globe. The UN can take action on a wide range of issues and provides a forum for its 193 member states to express their views through the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council 
and other bodies and committees associated with it. The UN is known for its efforts for peacekeeping, peace building, conflict prevention and humanitarian assistance. Besides these, in order to achieve its goal and coordinate efforts for a safer world for present and the future generations, the United Nations works at a global level on a broad range of other fundamental issues such as sustainable development, environmental protection, countering terrorism, disarmament, promoting democracy, human rights, gender equality, international health and many more such things. The World Bank was established in 1944. It is an international financial institution that works in order to fight poverty. The World Bank provides loans, financial help, assistance, policy inputs and technical know-how to developing countries all over the globe. Often criticized for its harsh measures and policies, the World Bank remains one of the leading institutions that provides support in reducing poverty and achieving sustainable development. Unlike the international governmental organizations, the international non-governmental organizations are independent organizations that address issues of global concern. These are also referred to as global civil society. Global civil society is the conglomeration of civil society groups from different countries and parts of the world that function together across borders on common problems. The nature and structure of global civil society is quite fluid and it includes people from different areas and walks of life from the entire globe. It may include reform movements, ethnic and linguistic groups, academicians, artists, environmentalists, advocacy groups, women's organizations and workers' organizations. It is an open or shared global space where people from diverse backgrounds can interact and relate to one another on various concerns regarding human rights, universal values and peace. As technology has facilitated communication, people throughout the world are increasingly becoming aware of the people and issues in rest of the world. The global civil society deals with many such issues which are pertaining to individual or the global level. People have now started to think themselves as part of the global rather than the local or regional areas. This awareness of global has led to emergence of global consciousness. The development of international standards and agreements by international organizations and institutions on various issues like environment, cooperation to fight terrorism and diseases are some of the examples of emerging global consciousness in the field of which civil society is quite active and engaged. So these are some of the aspects of political globalization or how globalization is influencing politics at the global level. But remember that the consequences of globalization are not confined only to the sphere of politics and economy. They spill over culture and society. To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture. We started our discussion with political dimensions of globalization. We discussed about the concept of global governance. In that context, we discussed about international organizations such as United Nations, World Bank and Global Civil Society as international non-governmental organization. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about social and cultural dimensions of globalization in detail. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.